Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. We are back down to zero days without mentioning Antonio Brown Perna. I'm starting to feel like football might happen. And it is because Antonio Brown is seeking attention just like July slash August last year. Today he announced on Twitter that he is, wait for it, wait for it, retiring from being unemployed by the NFL by continuing his NFL unemployment. That's the most Antonio Brown move ever. I'll have more on that today, plus the latest details on the state of the 2020 NFL season after the league met with the NFLPA today again, after numerous players told the NFL to get their shit together on Twitter over the weekend. Did they reach a resolution? It's good sports. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel for all of the NFL news video updates you could ever handle. Today's episode is sponsored by manscaped.com slash goodsports. The Lawnmower 3.0 is the best pube trimmer out there right now. You know that. I know that. And since pube trimming and social distancing go hand in hand, I'm assuming your bush is very trim and not grim. What else do we neglect though on our male bodies? Toenails. From your head to your toes, Manscaped has your body covered. Now with the Shears 2.0 four-piece stainless steel nail kit. Sounds manly, doesn't it? Slash tip tweezers, rounded point scissors, toenail clippers, and a medium grit nail file. Nobody likes an ungroomed set of feet, except for maybe hobbits. So ensure nobody calls you Frodo feet with the Shears 2.0 nail kit. To tame your pubes, check out the perfect package 3.0 to get the lawnmower. All of the ball toning products you've come to love with my 20% discount link at manscaped.com slash goodsports, which now includes free international shipping to Canada, Australia, and the UK. Okay, the thing that I wanted to convey to the- Holy shit! Oh god! Oh god! Take it away! Take it away! Take it away! How dare Mark Zuckerberg electric surf without a mask? Why the fuck does Mark Zuckerberg look like Pennywise the surfing clown? I know computer nerds never go outside, but I have literally never seen any human actually wear sunscreen like this. I will say, this is the, the photo I will show my future daughter when she asks if she can get a Facebook account. Uh, you really want to download an app invented by this guy? Ah! God damn! Mark Zuckerberg could scare RuPaul straight with that ghostly face. Now, Antonio Brown, in typical Antonio Brown fashion, announced that he was pretty much done with the NFL in a series of barely coherent tweets. First, he dropped this new profile picture Friday, which looks like the only good decision he's made in the last 720 days. Then he tweeted, Is it time to walk away? I done, check mark, everything in the game, question mark, exclamation, exclamation. Followed by, At this point, the risk is greater than the reward. Thank you everyone who've been part of this journey. I sincerely thank you for everything. Life goes on 84. The risk is greater than the reward is also what every person has said after having any sort of relationship with Antonio Brown. But he continued, I came, I saw, I conquered, mission complete, call God, hang loose emoji. The only thing AB hasn't conquered is learning where the fucking comma is on his keyboard. Then it was Himothy, which is the title of his new album, which I couldn't shit on even if I wanted to. Track 11 is called Urkel. AB will have my mercy for that alone. But on July 13th, he tweeted this, gearing up to do it again, AB 
So he went from gearing up to do it all over again to mostly quitting in the span of a few days. I'd say he's mentally very close to where he was at the beginning of last season. And based on the way he's tweeting, if an NFL team makes him a real offer, he will be on the field faster than you can say daily COVID testing for all players. I believe we will actually see many players on the field that we thought were done. Teams will be decimated with guys not allowed to play when COVID outbreaks inevitably happen at all facilities. Maybe guys like former Buccaneers and Broncos safety TJ Ward could be back in a lineup. I know he wants to, but teams aren't looking at him. Demarius Thomas, Des Bryant will almost certainly land on team rosters. Brett Favre will once again lead the league in touchdown passes. And maybe, just maybe, Jack Lambert can get ejected from a game after making exactly one tackle in a way that used to be legal every single play in the NFL. Seriously though, there's a lot of veteran free agents who may have played their last down in the NFL until this bizarre uncertain season came to fruition. If the NFL does not happen, they're definitely screwed. But if it does and bodies are needed, there's 50 free agents right now who you wouldn't realize nobody signed that could be back on the field this year. Guys like Mike Daniels, Taylor Gabriel, Marcel Darius, Jabal Sheard, Ezekiel Anza, Delaney Walker, hell, Josh Gordon. We forget how many players' careers die quietly every offseason, and maybe a silver lining is more players get a chance to play than during normal football circumstances. Now the Texans and Chiefs had rookies reporting to team facilities today to undergo COVID-19 testing. New Chiefs rookie running back Clyde Edwards Hilaire seemed pretty nervous. He told one beat reporter, I've just never been good at taking tests, man. Probably didn't have to worry about that at all at LSU. The Chiefs and Texans rookies will not be allowed to do anything at the facility other than get tested today. If they pass, they will be allowed back tomorrow which gives them just enough time to contract COVID and bring it to the facility untraced. Mark Davis says he won't go to any Raiders games in Vegas this season if fans aren't allowed to attend. Davis, of course, will be the only owner to clear two different stadiums of fans this season. When Mark Davis seems to be the most reasonable owner in the NFL, end times are near. Many notable players took to Twitter over the weekend to voice their displeasure with the NFL and its lack of a clear safety plan for a season. Russell Wilson, who, like myself, has a pregnant wife, which, let me tell you, is scary. And not just because you have over a thousand YouTube videos online to convince your future child that you're a fucking moron. Pregnant women have compromised immune systems, which is really fun to think about <laughs> during a pandemic. So I, I actually relate to where Russell is coming from. Guys like Drew Brees and Todd Gurley spoke up. And then, so did Miles Garrett. He's uh, maybe the one player you don't want vocalizing the importance of player safety. That'd be like hopping onto your Peloton and logging into your daily class only to find that Rob Ryan is your cycling instructor for the day. I think this shows you just how unorganized the NFL is. We forget the league isn't run by an algorithm or AI, but average dumb people like you and me. So when they are tasked with solving a complex problem, their weaknesses show like when the housing crisis forced Batman to liquidate his assets and take the subway instead of the Batmobile. All the players stated that they want to play. Hell, Mark Davis spoke about how dysfunctional the league has been in terms of figuring out a game plan. And they're all concerned the NFL hasn't figured out shit. Like leading up to today, did the NFL know that it can talk to the players and get their opinion? Like, I don't know, make a phone call to Russ Wilson and ask, what would make you feel safe, Russ? What? Oh, only, only Jesus makes you feel feel safe? Okay, we're, we're calling someone else. And then once they find a sane player, implement the things the players want. JJ Watt tweeted out exactly what the players knew uh, over the weekend and what their concerns were. So really all the NFL had to do was just read one tweet to figure out how to make players feel safe enough to secure a football season. I know they're busy trying to cover up a sexual harassment fiasco in Washington, but this seems like a slam dunk if they would just listen. 
Again, this whole safety thing is an illusion without daily testing that provides rapid results. All the NFL has to do is create the illusion of safety though, and everyone will buy in. Like when you purchase a warranty. Players don't know what the frequency of testing will be. Players don't know how positive tests will be handled. Players want a fair opt-out clause for those who are at higher risk or, have, or who have family members at higher risk. And players do not like that they can still be fined or in breach of contract if they do not show up on time while safety protocols have not been established. That's what JJ Watt tweeted over the weekend. That is what they were discussing today at the NFL NFLPA meeting, which led to the NFL agreeing to daily COVID testing. A big win for the players so they can feel safe returning to practice and facilities. I mean, it's pretty cool that the players came together and all they had to do was send out a bunch of tweets about their displeasure with the league to get what they wanted. And they didn't even have to resort to filling a bag with gummy dicks and throwing it at the league like AB most certainly would have done. Tom Pelissero dropped the details first on Twitter, typing with his manly fingers, the NFL and NFLPA agreed to daily COVID-19 testing for the first two weeks of camp, after which they'll look at positivity rates. If the rate drops below 5% for players and tier one slash tier two individuals, they'll move to every other day. Important deal as talks continue on other issues. Players will need multiple negative tests before they're allowed to be in the building for physicals or team activities. That's a lesson the NFL has taken from other pro leagues. NFL Chief Medical Officer Dr. Alan Sills says test results expected within 24 hours. So, it seems like the NFL ultimately did the right thing. Okay, all right, NFL. This was the final safety issue players wanted addressed. Uh, they're still hashing out some of the financial details, so nothing can go wrong there. But, I am feeling more optimistic than ever that we will have football this year. Tom also noted that the NFL contracted with a national testing lab that will not take resources away from local markets, meaning they shouldn't dip into the supply of local hospitals for normal people who need to be tested. He also mentioned the NFL spacing out the tests with days that players are on or at facilities with remote learning days to avoid guys going undetected with tests bringing in COVID. So maybe they have a decent plan. Maybe I was too hard on them, but it's, it's not fun complimenting the NFL. The one issue we still don't know about is whether or not the NFL will play any preseason games. That was not mentioned uh, as of yet. The NBA's bubble appears to be working as they reported zero positive tests out of the 346 players who were tested this last week. So another positive sign. The bottom line is the NFL players got a big win and I expect them to all show up at least for the month of August. This is an evolving situation, a fluid situation that can change at any moment. But as of right now, as of right now, Football's back, baby. Football's back, baby. Uh, uh, uh. Football's back, baby. Hot, hot, hike, hike, hot. Yes, it's true. I ghostwrite all of AB's music. Subscribe here on YouTube. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Pernan. Yeah.